Hey guys, Mike Moo here. This is going to be an unboxing and first impressions review of this. All right, first, this is a sponsored video. Uh, I have not been able to look up and research DVD players in a while because they're kind of a little bit of a dying breed. Good thing for you is that, or the rest of us, is that these DVD players will also play stuff off of USB flash drives. So if you have downloadable content, you got content that you have uh, specially prepared on USB flash drive or something, this is gonna be a play. Now we'll talk a little bit about this, uh, this company, which has been around uh, for over 10 years in this space. So they're supposed to know what they're doing Let's find out if that shows up in our unboxing as I talk a little bit more about the specifications of this particular model. Now this is a, uh, a model called the R-3020D as in dog. What is special about this versus DVD players that were designed for cars in previous years is that this actually has a full HD screen. I don't know if you know this, but a lot of DVD players, I mean DVDs in general, do not have or support full HD. That usually is reserved for Blu-ray. Now for DVD players, uh, they're usually, I believe it's, uh, gosh, it's gotta be like 480 by, 480 by 320 is a standard DVD resolution, but Blu-rays, of course, will have and fully support Full HD, and in some cases, you can encode them to support a little bit more than that. But this is full 1080p, and that's going to be enough for uh, the majority of what you're going to be watching on such a small screen. You don't really need uh, 4K screens like we have on our smartphones. Okay, so I can already tell this is going to require a little bit of insulation because we have this big box of stuff and accessories in here but a little bit more about this each display can play separate stuff so you got one kid that wants to watch this pj maxx or something and the other kid wants to watch some star wars uh, each display can uh, play something else different and that's not something that you can often find on a lot of uh, yin built car dvd players or upgrade kits where you spend thousands you know for the entertainment I see that this includes two headphones, which is great because you really uh, don't want, let's just say if you set this in the back of the driver's side seat or the, you know, whoever's driving, they don't want to be hearing necessarily let it go for the 15 million time. So they actually include headphones. Cool. And they're actually the type that goes over the ears. So it's going to help isolate a bit of the sound. I like that. So there's actually two sets for one for each of the displays. That's great. So that obviously means you got headphone jacks also built into the uh, displays. All right, so I'll move this aside. I'll try them out a little bit later. Now I imagine that, um, you know, they're not gonna be the best quality. They're not gonna be like Apple or Bose noise cancellation headphones, but it's really nice that they have them there so that you don't have to worry about uh, spending an extra couple hundred dollars trying to uh, get stuff like this set up. Okay, so here here comes the bits and pieces that are kind of interesting and something that I did not expect. So they have all these clips. These are obviously clips to, to, um, to interface with your headrest for you to go ahead and mount the displays. And this kind of reminds me of putting some of those pieces together. I'm sure it's not as complicated as it looks. This is a very hefty mount. Okay, so it's gonna take a little bit of work to get these things mounted, but I see that. And then we just have a standard dual output cigarette lighter adapter. So you can just, I see these are pretty standard. A lot of uh, CD players and DVD players used to have these, there's dual output, and it looks like there is sufficient wire to go ahead and hook these things up. Okay, that's what this box is about. It's got those things, and then you got a remote control, which, is a standard remote control. This is not some sort of fancy uh, Japanese style remote control, but it certainly has a lot of functionalities. You can take a close look at that. It has more functionality than a lot of people need. You know what? Ideally, they would provide two different remote controls, but um, you know, if I had to pick one remote control, I guess I'd choose to have all the functionality that you can do from the remote control rather than try to fuss with the touch screens, especially if you're driving. I could just pull over and um, or have or give the remote control to someone to adjust all the different things on here full featured remote control now if Rissalar is listening 
It'd be nice to have an additional remote control that just has very basic features that just has the play, pause, fast forward, rewind. This way people don't you know, freak out about remote controls with a lot of buttons on here. You get two of them. So one for each DVD player. It'd be interesting to see if they're both separately encoded for infrared. I, I don't believe so, but it makes sense that they do that. So you have one to control each one. All right, and here is actually the user guide, user manual. I'm gonna go through this stuff without looking at too much at the user manual because let's, let's face it, it's a DVD player. A lot of people know how to run and operate these things already. So uh, there's probably not gonna be a lot in here that you can't figure out already just from the remote control. Yeah, I see there's just a lot of basic stuff. Okay. So next we have video input cables, okay? So if you have an external device that has analog output, these are the adapters that you need. It includes those and this. This cable is probably to connect the two of them together so that they play the same exact thing from one player. But we'll get into this a little bit later. These are pretty standard things. These are things that used to come in camcorders. Uh, there's nothing that appears to be proprietary about those. And we have these two, what appears to be mounting screws. So that's what's in this bag. I'm gonna put this stuff all back in a bag and we'll get back to this a little bit later when I show the installation and setup and how I'm gonna do this in our SUV. All right, now to the main meat of the uh, of, of this whole thing, it's gonna be the 10.1 inch HD displays that are 1920 by 1080p capable at 60 frames per second. So I guess with the, you know, in the inputs, you can actually theoretically just connect up a game system if you wanted to uh, as well. Wow, this is actually pretty hefty. This is not like a lightweight type of a toy device. This is just definitely feels a little bit more premium. Now it's not gonna use, it's obviously not using the fanciest displays in the world because of how thick it is, but maybe it's just the speakers take up a lot of, uh, a lot of the, uh, the space in here, the speakers and the mounting mechanism. So this mounting mechanism is obviously gonna work with the brackets that are included. And I gotta say, this feels really hefty. This is not something that is gonna, you know, bounce around too much. This whole thing, see that? This is actually very uh, tight and, which is good because you don't want this stuff to be flapping up and down. And actually to access the DVD slot, you actually have to, bend it down anyway, and then this then this pops open and you stick your DVD in here. I don't know if many people remember that. A lot of lot of DVD, uh, portable DVD players and CD players used to be like this. It's not something you slot in. Okay, so it's got this protective thing in there. I'm gonna remove that and we'll see if I, see if I can go ahead and find a DVD to play. But that's a good thing. There's usually a red box everywhere and you can rent out movies pretty cheaply if you wanted to. But for the most part, you know, when I'm traveling, I'm probably just going to download a bunch of stuff to play. Now, good news, over here on the side, this is very, very important, very key in using this in a modern world today. It's got an HDMI right over here. HDMI right there, okay? It's got the HDMI, it's got a USB 2 slot, so it can play off of uh, USB flash drives and medias. And as a bonus, it has an SD card slot in there. Heck, even a lot of MacBooks today don't have SD card slots. So this has it too. So I can just download, put stuff on these little, tiny little flash cards, and it'll be able to play with uh, with all that stuff. It's, got, it's even got an AV out, and it's got an AV in. It's got a headphone jack. Okay, AV out, AV in, headphone jack, and then finally the DC jack adapter. One thing that would have made this really awesome is if it actually was battery capable, but you know, the DC jack is very standard. You do need to have a battery pack uh, running to keep it going, which is, you know, not too bad. These days you can buy lithium ion, lithium phosphate batteries to use on the go in a car. So, you know, if, if for whatever reason, uh, you know, your car is parked on the side, you don't want to keep running off the battery, just plug into one of those battery power banks with a 12 volt output and you're good to go. All right, so in the front here, we have a lot of touch sensitive buttons here, okay? We got, uh, I guess this is this is what removes the need from having the basic remote is you could touch it here versus trying to fuss with a touch screen. You have it right here, right? Last track, play, pause, forward, next track, the power switch, 
volume down, volume up, and a menu. How about that? They really did think about this. And actually, this uh, the screen actually looks, just, just looking at it, it looks like it's a high quality uh, item. Definitely does not feel like a cheap product, which is great. Shows, shows they know what they're doing. Now, I'm gonna have to look online and see how much all this stuff costs because I'm not exactly sure. Now they did send this for, for me to do this uh, this video unboxing and first impressions review. So that's that's kind of what I'm doing over here. Okay, so there's two of them. They're identical. They both have the same exact thing. So if you only wanted to use one, that's fine too. But you know, if you if you want to have people sitting in the back have entertainment, you put up both of these. Okay, so basically two identical units here. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug in the power switch using an external battery pack I have lying around here and we'll we'll see what everything how everything kind of looks like so give me a second hi this is actually future Mike this is two weeks after I've actually used this whole DVD player unit and uh, we've used it extensively on a trip back from the Pacific Northwest where we went up all the way up to Vancouver Washington drove back down to the uh, San Francisco Bay Area and uh, I want to say that, you know, as I'm going through and showing all this stuff and features about this DVD player, I found that, um, you know, just having this system available for entertainment for your passengers is a really big plus. I don't know if any of you have remembered back when you used to fly on an airline on a really, really long trip. We're talking, you know, 10 plus hours and you didn't have the entertainment of the screen. Uh, that was uh, that could have been pretty agonizing for some people. Whereas now in a lot of modern airplanes, they have, you know, the, the nice screen there with the streaming videos and movies and stuff that you can watch. Entertainment, basically. And that really changed uh, how uh, the whole experience was for a lot of passengers. This did exactly the same thing for my nephew, Patrick, who uh, on the trip back down, he just basically watched two movies back to back. And uh, that really helped him not be bored and stay entertained the whole way. So... Uh, we didn't have to worry too much about him because his eyes were basically glued onto the screen. Now, for obvious reasons, we didn't let him do this on most of the trip. It was only this last portion where we were driving straight through on the 5, where there wasn't a whole lot of interesting things to see anyway, and uh, we knew that he'd be extremely bored. So, um, I can speak on his behalf. He definitely gives it a thumbs up, and uh, you know this is definitely something that you should uh, want to consider. With that said, this is a sponsored video, and I'll go on to the details about this DVD player. All right, and we're back. So I went and got my power bank. It is, I believe, the Blue Yeti EB70. This is this basically powers my car, and the refrigerator I keep in the car charges my scooters when we're on the go charges via solar basically it's it's an it's an all-in-one everything and it's size decent enough for the car so i'll have a link down below for this but it has a cigarette slot output so i'm going to power it on and plug it right in there among other output slots okay we'll see how this goes power on now you can see there's already some pretty good deep blacks here and i'm actually in a fairly well lit environment i got actually got the sunshine coming in here, it's getting a little warm to be honest. So I'm gonna plug this in right here into the power slot down below. Uh, here we go, let's see. There we go, that's one. You see it powering on? No, because I actually have to turn on the power. And then I have one over here too. Okay, so I I'm gonna have both of these plugged in and obviously this is not installed in the car. This is just right here on my tabletop for this video. So I have both of these plugged in. Now I'm just going to turn this on. And that's the power button right there. Let's see if I tap it. Is it on? We're out of the hole. Here we go. Okay. So now it is on. We can see it has different modes that popped up. Oh, it makes a little beeping sound. I am typically against beeping sounds because I don't like having all the beep. But it's I guess it's good to have a little bit of a confirmation. Okay. So... I'm going to try the remote control now. Here we go. Power on. Input. So it's got DVD, HDMI, AV, USB, and SD. Now, something that just about everyone travels with is, of course, a smartphone. So I could theoretically try to connect my smartphone to an HDMI source out here. 
But I do believe that there's going to be, because on the box, it doesn't say that it supports the HDCP, which is some sort of copyright protection. So if I'm going to try to stream stuff from my adapter, okay, to an HDMI input slot, which I just have a basic HDMI cable here. Let's see if that works. I'm really curious. It doesn't have HDCP. If it did, then we'd be allowed to play directly. And I, I don't think that it does. So you can only play, I mean, basically it means that I can't stream from Netflix or something. Let's, let's see what happens, okay? So I'm gonna switch this over to, let's see, HDMI menu. Oh, I'm just gonna use the phone here. Uh, not the phone, I'm gonna just use the remote here to see if I can figure out uh, which one it is. Okay. Menu, on screen. No, there has an FM mode so it can transmit. Oh, here we go, I can turn the buzzer on and off. I'm gonna, let's see if I can turn that off. How do I switch that? Okay, here we go. Got rid of the beeping, thankfully. Picture mode, standard, brightness. This is at 55 brightness, which is, it appears to be plenty bright. Sharpness, color, tint, volume, software update. Okay, that's good. So potentially in the future, we could have a uh, software update going on uh, here. Now, I'm still looking for the, I, I, I couldn't find the input setting on here, so I'm still using a remote. And now I'm gonna switch on, I'm gonna press this DVD AV button, basically point it at it and then move it down to HDMI. Okay. Now this is HDMI input and I have my iPhone connected. Let's see, let's see what we get here. Let's see, oh, okay, so there's my screen. So I can broadcast, uh, I'm sure YouTube's gonna work, but I'm gonna go ahead and see if I could do uh, Netflix here. Let's try Netflix. And it looks like it is sort of showing up, but I think that once I hit play, we're gonna have a problem. So let's see, we just watched Tignataro. Let me try playing that. Let's see what happens. I'd be really surprised if this works. Okay, look at that. It's actually playing. I apologize for the reflection, as I told you, it's really bright in here. Okay, so I'm, I'm rotating this at, a, at an angle and okay, it is playing, guys. I can play Netflix off of this as long as you have a hotspot. It's it's actually it's actually playing. Let me turn up the audio. Let's see what's going on. It, you know what? It could be that um, that the uh, it's it's. Let me turn up the volume here. Volume is at one hundred. Oh, maybe I gotta control it from my phone here. Let's let's get. Let's get some uh, sound out here. English, English, yes. So subtitles are on. Let's play. And I'm not hearing anything. Where's the speakers? Do I have an unmute? No. Volume up, down. You know, let me plug in the headphones and see. Let's see what's going on here. See if see if any sounds coming out. That could be maybe the thing that where it's it, it doesn't work with copyright content. Let me take this and unplug this right now and plug in the headphones and see if we hear anything. Okay, let's see. Headphone. I think that that's a headphone out. Okay, plug that in. Let's see if I hear anything. Okay, these headphones are no good. Just scratch that. Maybe they're okay for kids, but they're not comfortable for my big head. So forget that. And I don't know why there's no audio right now. Okay, so I'm gonna try something else. I'm gonna try YouTube. Let's just pop open one of my latest videos. And let's see, the EcoFlow portable AC okay, power. Okay, decent sized battery pack. You can opt to get this with a battery pack or without a battery pack. Okay, there that you does go. Increase or decrease it is coming out now. Tremendously, uh, depending on your needs. Wow. Now, if you're interested in getting something like this, now you can. Uh, you're gonna have some. You can options. definitely hear. One of them is you can choose a battery pack that was designed 
you can definitely hear it and it's saying it's playing through airplay which is great uh, the speaker volume I mean it's this the sound the sound doesn't sound very good so I would probably keep it just from the headphones it'd probably be okay for news let me see if I can play a little bit of something from the news here and uh, let's just play something from su subscription and see some news that we might have on here let's see NBC News okay oh man it's just I don't know if anybody watches the news these days it's so crazy okay well I'll just play a little bit here let's see how that works yeah it seems okay for the news but you know what I don't know why there's no sound from Netflix so it looks like you know that that is that is a bit of an issue um, but you see if I'm playing from my phone technically I can also just uh, let's play something from uh, I could also just connect my phone to headphones and use Bluetooth that way so I can see right now that the video is coming out and if I wanted to switch the audio it wouldn't come through here I would have to connect via Bluetooth to my phone to watch Netflix but it's it's pretty cool that I can do that and it's actually in 10 inches now if we look at the quality let me look at the quality here quality is okay uh, I want to say that the color looks a little bit off yeah it looks let me let me try playing something else I want to say that the color needs some adjustment it definitely doesn't look as rich as as something that uh, that I would expect I'm looking at this right now okay so yeah the color Color's a little bit off. This stuff, this definitely okay. So I'm I'm showing this side by side, right? Look at the color difference. Not great. Yeah, I think that's where the weakness here is, is here. So in order to get this to match with this uh, through this AirPlay device, it doesn't look like it's very well tuned uh, for the color. So for something like that, I might have to go into the setup. And then adjust the color but as you can see the resolution seems to be there it seems to be what i expect keep in mind that when i'm doing it directly through this adapter the apple adapter isn't isn't really fantastic but because i'm doing it through the adapter i'm not getting the full uh 1080p it actually crops in a little bit so it doesn't look it doesn't look great is what i'm saying all right i'm going to try connecting it to my macbook right now we'll see if we see if we get any improvements I'm going to plug this in to a different adapter, which is also by Apple. So again, this is HDMI input. You can probably do this via the game consoles too that you have with HDMI output and uh, have a 10 inch screen, but uh, I'm now connecting. This is connecting through HDMI on my uh, laptop. And the color looks a little bit bluer, but it looks to be okay. Let's try playing this a little bit back. And I'm muting the audio, by the way. And I can already see that the color on here looks a little bit blue. All right, so there's going to be a little bit of setup that I'm going to want to go ahead and do on here by pressing the menu to see if I can tone down the... Uh, tone down the blueness here picture mode okay standard let's try it that's vivid user okay so I can kind of sort of try to tune it a little bit um, maybe the user setting might make more sense but definitely is not as crisp as uh, as as I was hoping that this would be but you know once I take a look at the price maybe you know maybe I'll change my tune and be like okay well that's very reasonably priced Okay, this is this is 1080p at 60p. And I'm not putting the audio out through that. Let me play around with the color, see if I can get this a little bit better. To set up the display, apparently you gotta be in DVD mode, and I just gotta go over here and make some adjustments here. So as you can see. In the setup screen, I got TV display settings, I got the angle mark, on-screen display language, 
use the different languages of sports, whether or not you want the screensaver on and last memory on or off. Now there's Dolby Digital, the Dolby setup up here up top. And it's just, just a little bit weird to uh, navigate here. So you got to move back. There we go. Okay. Dolby Digital, you got dual mono or dynamic. Here is where I do the video setup page. And it's going to be a little bit of a challenge because I can't actually see what's going on on the screen. Let me go ahead and plug back into HDMI and see if I can get this this view on the screen here and get to this. But uh, it might be the hue that I need to adjust. Maybe a set hue plus five. I don't know. It's a little bit hard to see because all I can see right now is the actual setup screen. Let me let me switch it to HDMI input and see if I can make some adjustments then. And I'll try getting the setup screen. No, I cannot. And that still looks a little bit cool, even though I adjust I tried adjusting the hue. It probably is better to do the complete reset. Okay, so I'm gonna switch this back to DVD and get back into that screen. I, I just have a feeling, guys, that this is not going to be the best in terms of color accuracy, nor did I really expect that, to be honest. Uh, so let me, let me try clicking the setup here. Let me go down. Let me get back to the... Uh, the display. Yeah, still confusing as heck. Okay, I'm gonna go back to display. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna switch this back down to zero, and I'll try saturation. Let's see if that does anything for me. Let's do saturation plus plus four. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to expect any, any really good uh, settings out of this, unfortunately. Okay, let's leave it at that. It's a little bit hard for me to tell here what's going on. And the final page is TV type auto English, just type parental settings. Okay, good. You can set a password and I could just reset everything. All right, I tried Netflix, I tried playing something, it didn't quite work out, the audio wasn't playing properly. I'm doing the off the iPhone, doing the official Apple adapter. And I'm playing, this is a Amazon Prime video. You can see the audio comes out. I'm not gonna play any more of it, just because, just because you, you get the idea. It is coming through, I'm just going to see about muting that. So I'm gonna mute it. So off of Amazon Prime, it is working. And this is the uh, picture quality that you can kind of expect. This is the new show. Now I do have to warn you, okay, take a look at that. The viewing angle top to bottom is not great, which is fine because you can tilt it. Uh, but side to side, side to side looks actually okay too. So, but I think the viewing angle top to bottom is only okay. That's kind of what you're expecting. Keep in mind, I'm in a very bright environment. Uh, I think in the dark, it's going to be a little bit better. Let me see if I can share this a little bit better. Okay, so see? See all that window light coming in here? Subjectively, the picture's decent. Uh, it is not quite... I mean, obviously, if you have a laptop, MacBook, for instance, everything's going to look a lot better. Here, everything has a little bit of a blue tint. It doesn't look really fantastic. 
nor did I really expect it to. Uh, let me take a look at the price of this. The price of this off of the price. What's the price? Dual DVD player. I'll link down. Just, just check out the video quality right there. DVD player. Okay. The price of this is currently $219.99 and you get a $40 off coupon, which brings it to $180 for two screens. I guess that's not bad. And these are supposed to be noise cancellation headphones, noise canceling. Uh, I think they just mean it's, it's a passive noise cancellation. It's not active. And if you have a big head, it really isn't uh, very comfortable to wear. Okay, so. All right. All right, let me give you a little bit of conclusion here. This is, this runs $180 right now through, uh, through my link down below. You can check it out. This is the kind of quality you're gonna expect. As you can see, the colors are a little bit off. You see, look how much bluer, purplish the tones are. This is not really what I consider true white. I've tried to adjust some of the color settings, but it's been very difficult to do. I don't think, honestly, I don't think there's a whole lot of latitude on here. But it gets the job done. The resolution seems to be okay. It seems to be uh, there. I have not tried playing through a DVD uh, directly and this does not support blu-ray but on the plus side it has hdmi input and i was actually able to play something from amazon uh, prime directly onto the unit via hdmi now is that going to be better than bringing an ipad tablet and playing directly no it's not but an ipad itself you know starts at 300 dollars, whereas you get two screens here with a built-in dvd player and, and some other functionality that you cannot get via a uh, tablet so, and plus a tablet's gonna be a lot easier to steal. People typically don't, you know, break into cars to steal yin, yin headrest uh, display units. Plus you get 10 inches of screen, you get a little remote control, and you actually get two little, maybe only good enough for children, headsets with smaller heads. And you get a package that's, you know, pretty decent for $180. Now, if you're going to be watching stuff that is, uh, if you're expecting a home theater experience in the back of the car, no, this is definitely not going to compare. This quality is probably what kind of what I expect. You know how when you go on one of those bus trips and they have like a screen up there for you to watch videos on? It's gonna be kind of like that. You know, not, not fantastic. The audio quality is okay through the speakers. You can hear things very well. There's no richness or tone in the speakers uh, at, at all. I mean, it's gonna be good enough for, uh, you know, newscasting, you know, cartoons, maybe some movies, that'll be okay. You're probably just gonna to wanna to go ahead and plug in your own headphones into the unit to listen better. But if you are gonna listen throughout the whole car, it has FM stereo uh, transmitter already built in, so you can transmit to any a basically FM capable car, and that's gonna sound way, way better than, uh, than what you get from the built in speakers here. But overall, I think $480, if you have children and you need to keep them entertained, I think that's not a bad deal. Now, I do wish that this was Blu-ray capable. It is not, but it's got HDMI input and it'll support video playback from the USB stick function or SD cards. So that's just a nice win overall. Now, would I recommend this for, uh, for normal people who don't have children? Probably not. I mean, the, the quality is only okay. Most people will probably be staring at their smartphones anyways. The AirPlay doesn't seem to support Netflix, which is something that a lot of people probably wanna watch uh, while they are you know, they're driving somewhere or it'll support YouTube, obviously, because I'm playing one of my videos on here. The screen brightness seems to be sufficient. I wish it would go a little bit, you know, not so bright later on in the evening, but you know, the fact that it's there, that's not too bad. So overall, I recommend this if you have kids or you're gonna go on a road trip. I don't recommend it just for the general person who just, uh, you know, just wants an extra screen that they want to airplay to or um, send out uh, HDMI signals. I definitely would not recommend this for gameplay. I think that if you are a, 
let's just say if you are a uh, what's that term let's say you're a pro gamer this isn't the screen for you it's going to be enough for casual games but it's definitely not something you're going to want to play on the xbox uh, all the time or on a road trip but the fact that you it is capable of supporting hdmi input is pretty awesome So you can see I have one of the shims down and I just slot this in and then once I get the other one I can slot it in right there and that should hold everything up pretty well. So it's one per side, they definitely give you a lot. Just gonna stick this right in there. Actually it's probably better just to mount it right here. Yeah, this one's good. Okay. And I slide this guy all the way in there now that's pretty tight okay so now I have that all set up in there I can then just take this mount right over here stick slot that right in slot that right in now you'll note this this little slot over here that allows you to lock it in place with a screw I don't know if I need to do that but I'm gonna yeah looks like I will okay so once that in then I take and look for the screw, just screw that piece in there. If only I can remember where, where I have that somewhere here. Here it is. Okay. So we have these screws. This will then slot you in right over here, as you can see that right there. And then I can lock it in. This way it doesn't, uh, it doesn't fall out. Okay. There you go. Boom. All right, I have it plugged in. See a little light down here. I'm gonna power it on now. I don't actually have a DVD in here, but it'll default to DVD mode. And actually I'm out here in the afternoon. It looks okay. And like I said before, this is a little bit, uh, a little bit blue for me. All right, that's it for this. First look impressions and unboxing. Please give it a like, subscribe for more. I'll catch you in the next one. Please use my links down below if you are interested in getting this and trying it out yourself. Right now it's $180, not bad at all. I mean, that's basically two dinners out nowadays with inflation, right? Thanks for watching. That's Patrick watching Spider-Man in his own personal home theater.